The discussion that follows was the one which, of the four, I was most apprehensive about. We have a party in government, the SNP, and a candidate not in government, Tony Giuliano. What's the right approach in that situation? What's the fair approach? The truth is, this election is overshadowed by the European question. Or as the press incessantly phrases it, the question of Britain's place in Europe. And by the way, I fear this is fast becoming the age of the understatement. But regardless, here we are, and this is a question I often ask myself. Without UKIP, are we here at all? I mean, in a historical sense, in a rational universe, by which I mean dropping the idea of fate, quote unquote, altogether, there are only really two ways of answering that question. How did we get here? We're either here because of individuals, or we're here because of what are called trends and forces. Similarly, can you imagine the last 10 years of Scottish politics without the SNP? The impact of this party, love it or leave it, cannot be understated. It's a party which, in addition to its extremely proactive and motivated support, can also claim to be the near sole architect not simply of an election victory or two, but of a cultural and political shift to which the word seismic is itself an understatement. Like UKIP, it polarizes opinion. And like UKIP, I have my differences with many of those who support the SNP. And many of these differences are serious. But if we are to avoid a calcification of entrenched divisions, which I spoke about at the beginning of my first discussion, which would be catastrophic, by the way, we need to find common ground. We must also remember critically that those with whom we may disagree are often guided by the purest of motivations, and my guest today is no exception. Tony Giuliano is the Scottish National Party candidate for Edinburgh Western. I immensely enjoyed our discussion, and that discussion is what follows. I hope you enjoy it. This session is composed of two parts. As per last week's discussion with Kat Headley of Scottish Labour, which in addition to my chat with Alex Cole Hamilton of the Liberal Democrats, you can find on my channel, the time codes for each topic or question I discussed with Tony are in the description below this video, allowing you to jump around a little. And as always, and lastly, if you like this video, drop it a thumbs up. And if you really like it, consider finding your way to that red subscribe button also below this video. I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to talk about this election is sort of overshadowed by the European referendum in a, in a strange sort of way. It, 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 and the European referendum itself is overshadowed by other votes that have gone on. It's been very tumultuous decade or so, both in Scotland and in Britain generally, politically, it's been quite intense, um, I guess, in the wake of the financial crisis and all these other um, kind of spin-offs, I guess. And um, there's a lot of debate economically around this election in Scotland, uh, particularly the uh, income tax, either rise or keep it the same or lower it, right? And um, the SNP are in favour of keeping it the same, as opposed to increasing it, which I when I spoke to Kat Headley last week, she, mm. the line she had was that it's the first election they've went into at the Labour Party, the Scottish Labour Party, where they've not, uh, where they've promised to increase taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, the SNP and the Conservatives, I think, want to keep it more or less the same. Um, do you think, I mean, is that, would you say there's a, a fiscally conservative strain, which is something I have myself that runs through the Scottish National Party, that where it, it's kind of um, more balanced economically? No, I don't agree with that. No? I think it's um, I think it's socially progressive. I mm -hmm. think our tax our taxation policies are mm -hmm. socially progressive because the fact of the matter is mm -hmm. that what Labour is proposing mm -hmm. will hit the poorest hard. Yes. Uh, the basic rate increasing the basic rate mm -hmm. means that everyone will be paying more tax. Now, why right. should people uh, who are lowest earners mm. uh, be paying for Tory austerity. Mm. So what we're saying is that we will protect um, the lowest paid, unlike Labour. You remember when Labour came up with the idea of the rebate and then under scrutiny mm. it vanished mm. three or four weeks later. Mm. They are no longer proposing to have a rebate for the lowest paid. Mm. So you know, their tax policies were written on the back of a fag packet, frankly. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, but they completely were, they were completely demolished under scrutiny. Mm -hmm. They make no sense to anybody whatsoever. They make no sense at all. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're proposing is to have... Um, what we're proposing will actually increase the revenue mm -hmm. um, of, of the Scottish budget because we will not introduce a tax cut the same tax cut mm. that George Osborne wants to introduce south of the border mm. for the highest earners. Mm. We will not do that. Nicola Sturgeon has made it very mm. clear. And that means that we will have more revenue in the Scottish budget, um, which is ultimately what 
raising, uh, you know, what what you know, what's taxation all about, and, and and the point of having a more progressive tax mm -hmm. system. So you're you're one hundred percent in favour of progressive taxes. And one hundred percent in favour of, of mm -hmm. progressive taxation. That if you can afford to pay a little bit more, then you pay a little bit more. What Labour and Lib Dems want to do is ask everybody to pay a little bit more without giving them that rebate, mm -hmm. uh, giving the lowest paid our teachers, well, some some of our. I guess some of our teachers. Some of our time. teachers, yeah. so some of our, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, public sector workers. C certainly um, some of our college lecturers and further yes, education. Yes, absolutely. So we're we talking, could get onto if you like later on. I mean, it, it, it depends, you know, uh, uh, certainly looking at the threshold, yeah. you do have some of the lowest paid that would be affected by this. But it. even our, doc uh, even our, 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 you know, police officers and, and teachers who are earning a little bit more, public sector workers, they too will be hit hard mm -hmm by what the Lib Dems and Labour are proposing. And what we're seeing is that's not the right thing mm. to do at the moment. But the proposal that we have, mm. which will increase the Scottish budget, mm. um, will mean that we will have more money mm. to invest in our public services. Exactly. Uh, and in terms of taxation, I'll finish off by mm. saying of that, um, well, you haven't directly asked me, but I think it's important to say that we will not, at I mean, this stage... <laughs> I'm not sure what it is yet. At this stage, uh -huh. we won't increase in terms of the 50 yes it's rate yes um because the point of taxation the point of a t progressive uh -huh. system is that you end up with more money mm -hmm. and in actual fact by raising the 50p rate we could end up with less money in the scottish budget yes, and if the only, curve. indeed if only yeah. seven percent mm -hmm. of those seventeen thousand people mm -hmm. in that band in that rate uh, relocated their assets um south of the border and, and i was going to ask about asset relocation yeah. in the wake of panama absolutely um, is we this could tax lose protest rent. is that a tax protest is that the laffer curve in action in other words well um you know i think laffer says you know, anything above a certain amount you can have diminishing returns well, in your revenues um well this is so. why we need to you know this is about this election is about responsible <clears throat> government and ultimately it's about record in government it's a, it's about vision it's about team it's about Leadership, of course, mm -hmm. um, but competence in government mm -hmm. here is key. And yeah. no competent, responsible government mm -hmm. is going to put ideology mm -hmm. before the reality yeah. of our finances. That's that you know, we if 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 by if by raising that fifty p rate like Labour want to do, mm -hmm. uh, purely soundbite politics mm -hmm. for electoral purposes, if that would diminish. The, the amount of money we have in our budget, then what's the point of doing it? And of course, one of the things uh, when I spoke to uh, one of your opponents, Kat Headley, last week, is that she, I was quite surprised she mentioned um, Labour and the working complacency in the same breath when speaking about Scottish Labour in decades past at Labour at the UK level. Um, and the angle, I guess, was that a similar thing is happening to the Scottish National Party. Do you reject that, I assume? And if so, why? I mean, if you're in government for a long time, you become complacent. What you say, what, in, what you have to say to that? It, well, it's interesting. Kat actually, I think, mm -hmm. mentioned it last night at our, at our hustings, mm -hmm. at our um, really lively hustings last night, Ian Christophan, and um, I, I take issue with that. I, I think that people see that, in actual fact, we are delivering for mm -hmm. Scotland. We are, you know, we're one of the very few political parties in Europe that actually, in terms of opinion polls and um, in, in, in terms of, you know, like uh, support, we're increasing. I mean, can you name many political parties in terms of parties of government mm -hmm. anywhere in the European Union that continue to increase poll numbers have gone up instead of that. public yeah. support? Yeah. You know, I, I, the more they govern. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we've delivered the things that we said we yeah. would do. The council tax freeze. Some people don't like the council mm -hmm. tax freeze. But we had it in our manifesto. Yes. And if we didn't deliver on that promise, then people would be saying, well, you've not delivered, your politicians not delivering on their promises yes. again. We delivered the council tax freeze because we said we would do it and people voted for it in 2011. Yes. Mm -hmm. Same with policies like keeping uh, education free. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lib Dems down and I south. I have a question about that that will come up later. Okay, well, we can, we can, we can, we can discuss I, further education. No, but, um, but uh, you know, which the Lib Dems down south you turned on. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, they did. But right. uh, but you know, um, I, I, and and I can go on. You know, we've protected the free bus pass for the elderly. We've mm -hmm. uh, protected free personal care. You know, and record apprenticeships. P 
people see the investment we've put into our renewables uh, as well. And even in this constituency, mm -hmm. you know, building the fourth crossing. Yes. Uh, 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 Scotland's largest infrastructure project that the Lib Dems told us we didn't need. Indeed, the last Liberal MSP for this constituency refused to vote in favour of the new fourth crossing, mm -hmm. which in recent months we have been vindicated as a party, mm -hmm. you know, because engineering advice mm -hmm. has always, since you know, the early 2000s, mm -hmm. been telling politicians, you need to build a new bridge. And, and I guess if you look at the United States, you see what the repercussions can be of letting infrastructure decay and kind of absolutely. sweeping under the carpet, absolutely. which is a huge issue, I think, in this American election, is infrastructure. Absolutely. I don't think it's talked about enough, but apparently it is. Absolutely. And Nicole Stevens, mm -hmm. when he was, you know, the deputy first minister, the Liberal Democrat deputy first minister, uh, uh, you know, he was, mm -hmm. he was defending his position that he they shouldn't be building a, that there was no need for a fourth crossing and, you know, completely ignored all of the engineering advice and the first thing that we did when we got into power in 2007 is we started commissioning a new fourth crossing uh, and that's what we're building on and time under budget. And of course, as you mentioned, the largest infrastructure project uh, currently ongoing in Scotland and uh, this kind of leads me to my next question. We're sticking with the economics uh, for another few minutes then we can move on to some international stuff including Europe. Um, the jurors figures that were released a couple of months ago. Now, Scotland's budgetary deficit in cash terms is nowhere near the UK's budgetary deficit, and I, I would probably hold Labour responsible for that, personally. I grew up in a recession, and, and I think, and I turned 18 in 2009, and so I think I'm quite fiscally conservative. I don't like debt, and I don't like deficits, and I think, um, though within reason, right, I mean, you're never going to have no debt. But the kind of debt levels that have been allowed to build up within Europe, but within Britain particularly, are astonishing. One point five trillion pounds, which is an, a quantity of money which just Absolutely. really doesn't exist. Absolutely. Um, now, about fifteen billion for Scotland, much smaller. Um, the fourth bridge obviously costs a lot of money. Um, council area debts. What's the solution long term? I mean, sometimes you have to overspend. What's the Scottish National Party solution long term for sort of closing that gap? Because I think there's a lot of people in Scotland. Culturally, the joke, or I guess the stereotype, is that Scottish people are a little bit fiscally conservative. They're very compassionate, but they're also very fiscally conservative, or maybe the joke is tight-fisted. I don't think that's true, but you, you're careful with their pennies, maybe, we'll call it. Um, well, you know, uh, we talked a lot about this mm. during last year's election, and in the, general, in the yeah. general election, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the point that we wanted to, uh, to have a, a very small increase uh, uh, for our public services. In terms of, you know, the the investment that is that that is needed, but we absolutely, you know, acknowledge the fact that um, that you know there is a deficit, there is a, there is a debt there that has been built mm -hmm. up through the years by the Labour Party and the Conservative mm -hmm. Party, um, and and it's it's quite frankly shocking that it's always the poorest mm -hmm. that are having to pay the price. You know, I've seen in my job the effects that the Lib Dem. Tory cuts of the past five years have had on the most vulnerable in society. And isn't it interesting, you talk about the date, and this is, this is all linked, because ultimately, um, you know, Angus Robertson actually asked a very good question at PMQs very recently. You know, why is it that we've got more uh, UK government staff checking up on, uh, you know, um, the legitimacy of people on benefits uh, whereas we've hardly get anyone checking up on tax evasion. So their you know? priorities are in the wrong place. Their priorities mm -hmm. are in the wrong place. They're constantly targeting the poorest who mm -hmm. have been hit by the financial crisis. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've got the likes of George Osborne that goes to Brussels arguing against a cap on bankers' bonuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes my blood boil. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing someone who is defending, passionately defending the people at the top who are partly to blame. They're not. It's not all the bankers' fault. The bankers have their uh, must take their share of the blame. But politicians, you know, the boom and bust politics of Gordon Brown. Yes. That's also to blame as well. Um, and but, I know a few hardcore libertarians who would attribute it to fiat currency and money printing. Well, and indeed. Big old full on U.S. Federal Reserve kind of. Sure. Strain of, of conversation. I love those guys because they're so wacky. Yeah. But that's what's yeah. fun about politics. But you know, read the yes. opinions. But yes, yes, certainly there's a problem in. Uh, when you're, I mean, it was like the thing with uh, disability recently. Um, I, I, one of the problems with uh, the Conservative government in London and previously the Coalition government is I always assume surely there's got to be a guy in the room that when they propose the 
the new thing, you know, whether it's, oh, we're going to cut, you know, uh, stuff for the disabled. Um, yes. Th there should be one guy in the room that says, come on, guys, how's that going to look? Well, you know, absolutely. Just one the voice of reason. And not even for moral reasons, just for PR reasons. Sanctions. Like, <laughs> sanctions mm. have been an appalling yeah. uh, uh, thing on, on, on our society. Mm -hmm. And the way that they have been deployed... Um, against some of the most vulnerable, you know, even people, you know, people with mental health problems yes. who maybe have been told to fill in a form or appear at a certain time and place and might not be physically, mentally able to mm -hmm. do so. And you might think that filling in a form is easy, but, exactly. you know, if you look at those yeah. forms these they days, really struggle. Some people really there are, struggle. you know, a lot of people, yeah. particularly if you've got mental health problems, might struggle to, to do mm -hmm. that. And uh, it might sound like the simplest mm -hmm. thing, but it's, it's the reality. And, um, uh, uh, and the way that these people have been have been marginalised, uh, uh, while the few at the top, as in the very one percent, are, you know, the, 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 they're yeah, they're, and, and to an extent, it's dehumanising. Like they've they've almost not taken the, into account the fact that this person is disabled. They're sort of reduced to a name on a list, and they should be able to come in. Yeah. And you take nothing else into consideration because you've kind of lost perspective. I guess would be. One of the things that it reminds me of, especially when you're you're asking someone to come in. Well, especially you, when you when you see they can walk, right? I mean, it's like you don't know. Especially when yeah. you see something like the Panama leaks, mm -hmm. yeah. and and you know, we all know that this is happening. We all knew that it was happening, happening and 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 happening for a long time. Um, but you know, as I say, when you have this, uh, when you're so determined mm -hmm. to go after the poorest and the weakest mm -hmm. and the most vulnerable, uh, but you do nothing. To ensure that, or not as much, yeah. you know, with uh, with as much vengeance, yeah. almost, uh, for the ones at the very top, yeah. when you know that this is happening, to protect the interests of a few, that's just wrong, and um, uh, and and I think that has to change. Mm -hmm. uh, last point, I guess, on the economics aspects, um, and it sort of relates to so this um, uh, public finance with the schools. This is a big issue right now. Mm. We I went to Craigmount. Uh, there right. were giant cracks in the wall actually in about 2004 at Craigslist, but I think they were just settlement uh, fractures. I mean, public schools are some, many of them falling apart. Uh, what's the solution there? I mean, should they be falling apart? I don't think they should be. Well, where do we start with yeah. this one? I mean, PFI has been an utter disaster for the city of Edinburgh. It's been a disaster for Scotland. You know, we're paying 40 million a year mm -hmm. for schools that are crumbling after only 10 years. Right, yeah. You know, and I've heard people now say, oh, it's not a, uh, it's not a procurement is issue, it's a construction issue. Well, like the two things are linked. Well, well not being the originators <laughs> of the policy, the Scottish National Party have continued the policy. Is it not a policy that the SNP no, like? No, no, we, 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 we have what? absolutely not continued with PFI. It's been a completely different system that we've used mm -hmm. through the Scot Scot Scottish Futures Trust, where, whereby the, well, the interest payments are, are not like uh, the ones that are used under PFI, um, and we have a lot more control over the the use of those buildings. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at if you take the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, mm -hmm. one hundred eighty million pounds to build, mm -hmm. but we're paying one point three billion until I think twenty thirty four. I mean that's scandalous. That's an absolute scandal. That instead of using that money for frontline services, for more doctors, for more nurses, mm -hmm. for more GP practices. We are repaying an interest to private companies. Yes. That has to be absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. And the SNP has not been continuing PFI. Mm -hmm. And my solution, you asked for a solution, and I, just, yep. I don't just want to you know, criticise like other parties. Yeah. I think that the council needs to take ownership of these buildings. Mm -hmm. um, the, I have no faith in this consortium whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Schools have been let down. Parents have been let down. Pupils mm -hmm. and teachers have been let down. Mm -hmm. The council needs to repair mm -hmm. through this consortium these schools, mm -hmm. get them sorted, and once they're ready, we stop those contracts. Mm -hmm. The contracts are gone. As far as I'm concerned, you have broken your terms of the contract. Mm -hmm. If you cannot guarantee the safety of these schools and kids' safety, you, the, the contract's over. But of as course, far as the I'm oversight concerned. is coming from the council. The oversight is coming. Sure the oversight is, is coming from the council, and I've seen the Labour leader of the council at the time apologise now. But the point of PFI is that it's building on the cheap. Mm -hmm. You build on the cheap now and you pay later or you pay for a long period of time. That's mm -hmm. the, the whole point of PFI mm -hmm. is that you're, sa you know, you're saving money at the very start. Mm -hmm. You know, because, it, 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 because of the private... If you can imagine, you've got a credit card, mm -hmm. you know, and 
the huge amount of interest if you don't pay it uh, at all, all at once. Mm -hmm. You're paying it over a period of time, a much longer period of time. Uh, and then in the end, you actually, over that 30 year period, you end up with less. Yes. So what we've got here is substandard buildings, unsafe buildings, and taxpayers in Edinburgh paying a hell of a lot of money for really bad public services. That's not good enough. Which isn't helping the uh, deficit, I guess. It's not to help, well, um, exactly.